this is now examples part three. So example five says use midpoints and the given number of rectangles to find an approximation of the region between the graphs of the function and the x-axis over the given interval. So the previous example was left endpoints and right endpoints. This time our endpoints are not endpoints, but they're midpoints, okay? So we'll see what that looks like in just a second. So it's a little bit different. We have to do it um, two different times. We can just do it once. So I am gonna draw this function here from zero to pi. And if I'm going to cut up it into rectangles, let me see what the width would have to be. So the width would have to be b over a over n, which means pi minus zero over four, which means the rectangles would have to be pi forced units. So let's cut that in half and then cut it in half again. So we have zero, we have pi over four, we have two pi over four, which is pi over two, three pi over four, and then finally pi. Okay, so when I plug these guys into the function, I can get the graph here. So sine of zero, I believe is zero. We'll just use this real quick. So sine of zero, the y value is zero. So the graph starts here. Um, sine of pi over four is square root of two over two, which is approximately 1.7, but let's just make sure. Oh no, sorry, 0.7. So let's say this is one. And one, two, three, four, five. So about half would be here. So it's a little bit about right there, maybe. Then sine of pi halves is going to be one. And then three pi over four is going to be the y value, square root of two over two again. And then the y value at pi is going to be zero again. So this is what the graph looks like. It does touch the x-axis on both ends, so we don't have to chop it off. The area we're looking for is underneath this curve and between the x-axis, okay? But in order for me to draw my rectangles, um, and I'll draw them in red, um, I am gonna need to take midpoints. So I'm not using a left endpoint or a right endpoint for this. I'm using a midpoint something in the middle between these two. Well, what is in the middle between these two? That would be pi over fours minus zero divided by two, which would be pi over eight, okay? And actually you can just keep increasing by pi over eight and you should get all the endpoints. So pi over eight, two pi over eight is pi over four. This would be three pi over eight. Four pi over eight is pi over two. This would be five pi over eight. Six pi over eight reduces to three pi over four. Seven pi over eight would be here in the middle. And then eight pi over eight is pi. So what we wanna do is we wanna find these y values because those are going to be the heights of our rectangles. So let me draw the rectangles. So this is the height. So between pi over four and zero, you've got a rectangle here with that particular height. Same thing going on between pi over four and pi over two. It's gonna have this particular height. I'm trying to draw this as best I can. Then this particular height for the next rectangle. Oops, I'm getting a little crooked here, sorry about that. And then this particular height for the last rectangle. Now it should be symmetrical, but of course when I drew it, I drew it a little bit off. Um, so it's not exactly symmetrical, but it should be because the curve of sine is symmetrical. So just imagine that these two rectangles have the same height. Um, if I would have drawn it correctly, it would have. Now I do need to know those y values because those are the, the heights of the rectangles, which means I will need those to calculate um, the areas. So we need to find g of 3 pi over 8 as well, g of 5 pi over 8 as well, and g of 7 pi over 8. Now those in the values are not on my unit circle, so I will just be plugging them into the function. So I'm going to have sine of x 
and I'm gonna hit enter but ignore that value so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna plug pi over 8 store X um, so I'm gonna plug that in here let me make sure my calculator is in radian mode it is and then hit enter so I get um, I'm just going to estimate a few decimals. I don't want to be too far off on my answer, so I am going to just end up using all of the ver the um, decimals I see here. It does still keep going, so it is still an approximation, a rounding. Now I'm going to do 3 pi over 8 store, oops, 3 pi over 8 stores x. Oh, that didn't work out right. 3 pi over 8 store x. Then I'm gonna go back and find my function. There we go. I get 0.92387953325. Then five pi over eight store x. Go plug that in. I get 0.92387953325. And then seven pi over Eight, which we can assume will be the same as um, pi over 8 just because of the symmetry right um, plug it into sine and we get 3.82683424 oh three four three two four Okay, so then now we still need to find the area. So the area is going to be the first rectangle's area plus the second plus the third plus the fourth. So the width of each one of these is pi force units. So you get pi over four times this height, which is 0.382683424. Then the second one is going to be, again, the same width. Pi over 2 minus pi over 4 is pi over 4. But this height, 0.92387953325. Oops. Plus, then now this rectangle. So it's got the same width, pi over 4. And it's got this height, which happens to be the same as that. So if I'm going to add the same together I could just put a 2 in front because there's two of them then for the fourth rectangle um, again the width is pi over 4 and the height is this g of 7 8 is the same as this value so I've got pi over 4 times this I already have pi over 4 times this but if I add another one that's the same as saying I have two of them so really what you end up with here is if you reduce those Oops. You end up with this. So let's type that in the calculator. Um, clear. And I get approximately 2.052344306. Now usually they have you round it to like four decimal places. So this four would not affect that three. So in my computer, I will probably type in 2.0523. And that is the approximation of the, air, of the um, area. Now, we're not sure exactly if it's an oversum or an undersum because notice that here it's under the graph a little bit, but also over the graph a little bit, okay? 
So in the same thing here, it's under and over, under and over, under and over. So we don't know exactly um, that this is an upper sum or a lower sum. All we know is that it's an estimate, okay? So the actual area will be somewhere close to this value, okay? Um, and the way you find actual areas later will be when you learn about the definite integral, okay? That will be how you find the actual area. A really, really, really awesome and almost precise um, estimate.